Hey love bugs, it's Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed and doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome and to my returning subs, to my growing extended beautiful family. As always, thank you so much for the love and support. It is truly appreciated. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light. And many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have been watching my videos for a while and have not already, please, you know, drop me a line. I would love a chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me. And if you feel like the videos just give you an uplift, a good uplift or a vibe that you know you really, truly need it, just to get you there, hey, please go ahead and share. It's greatly appreciated. So, um, the video I'm doing today is called Twin Flame 101. Hey, Okas, um, closing the door to the spiritual void, knowing that you're uh, void, uh, knowing you're on the vo uh, void stage of a spiritual awakening. Y'all ain't never heard of this. I know it was like, what was I watching yesterday? Y'all know I be telling y'all about the movies I be getting hit to. I'm like, hey, if you watch these kind of movies, you know, it was like, um, it was this movie called Cellar. The cellar, you know, like when you go downstairs, you know, some places call it a basement, it's called a cellar. Either one, either one, that mess just looked creepy to me. And it was just like, it had something to do with quantum physics and stuff like that. So, you know, it's Empath Alley if you, if you like different stuff like this. And when I tell you this movie gave me spiritual chills left and right so I can resonate with it because it's just like, I think I was talking to Alex. You know, Alex watches all my videos. I love that man so much. Oh, it's like my brother from another mother from over in the UK. You know, it's just like, he, you know, he always challenging me or he'll leave his different uh, uh, experiences. And I know I was talking about hieroglyphs and stuff like that. And when I tell you, this is stuff that I was talking about when it was uh, like 1044. And when you're looking at the movie, and it's tr I'm trying to tell you what I learned from it without really telling you what was going on. Because if you choose to watch the movie, you know, please go watch it. It, it, it was real good. I said, I know I got to watch Incantation today in the movie Master. I was like, man, look. You know what I'm saying? I usually don't watch movies like when I said, what kind of master is this? Because this is going to be some racial stuff. And you ain't about to watch that. But it's uh, with my girl Gina Bell in it. And she um, playing, I guess, the headmaster of this this uh, this school. But no, Seller is about th these people. Um, I know I've seen this girl in move a few movies. I forgot to look it up. But um, I know I've seen her in a few movies. And it's just like, dang, she's been on a movie thing you know the movie game for a good minute but it was like she her and her husband were advertisement uh it, uh it, you know um advertisement advancers whatever you want to call it like you know was doing facebook you know instagram stuff like that and they were making this new stuff so they had to move they were in ireland and whatever house this was it was like a thing about counting when i'm looking at this movie I'm just sitting up here speaking in German like, you know, I have not really spoken in German in so long. It's like, you know, I haven't been to Germany. I used to live in Swankford and Frankfurt, Germany back when I was like five, six years old. And, you know, it, it was just like when they were counting, all of a sudden I started going to a vibe where I was like, I am five, two, you know, I was just like, wait a minute, I don't even remember how to do this. Why am I doing that? And it's like we already going through. I don't know about y'all. You know, it may sound crazy. If you can understand, you can understand. But it's just like certain things that, you know, universe is guiding you to watch. A lot of times it will mess with your your consciousness, your state of mind, your consciousness. And it, it will bring in something that you didn't know you were advanced to sit up here and know. Or it was preparing you to know or whatever. But it's like I tell people all the time with these books and these movies and stuff like that is life imitating art, art imitating life. Even if it's is based on a fiction it is bringing some kind of truth in and when I say this brought truth it was truth for me because it's like you know I, I, I told y'all about uh, what was it about two weeks ago I keep on hearing the movie the, the song seven and next to you know uh, the woman named Rose is in the movie and you know her name you know my name in Spanish is you know Red Rose so it, it was just like hearing the movie and they were talking about seven prints of darkness and stuff like that and I'm like wait a minute because it's like if there's seven prints of darkness in, in hell there's seven prints of darkness in heaven you know there's always something mirrored out to it but it's just like for that to happen and next thing you know I guess the girl the, the, the lights went out in the house 
And, you know, and next thing you know, she was like, you know, baby, when she was like, mom, I can't do this. I'm terrified because when they first moved there, it's like, who the heck goes to work? As soon as y'all move into a house, this is that time for y'all to be moving in, getting stuff straightened out, unpacking. I know that's the least with me because I'm not doing nothing until my house is all undone because I don't want to feel like getting off of work and I'm still unpacking. That's just me. But it was like, she was like, I got to go to work. And she she was like, Mom, you know, this is we just moved here and this house is creepy. And then she was like, you can do this. You know, you older. You know, she's like probably about 15, 16 years old. And her brother's like probably about 8, 9 years old. You know, those little, little kids be annoying you, whatever. But next thing you know, lights went out. She don't went out. She went downstairs. She's like, Mom, look, I can't do that. I'm leaving. It's like, do not leave your brother there. She was like, no, I'm gone. You know, and this and this and that. She was like, look, when I get scared, I count. And then she was just like, there's only 10 stairs to get to the fuse box. And all you got to do is, you know, because they said it's the, uh, is the uh, you know, the plugs, the outlet plugs. They blown. She's like, I don't know. I think so. And then she was like, well, you can go downstairs. She's like, no, nah, Mom, I ain't about to do that. So she started counting. And then the thing that made me, you know, she said there's only 10 steps you got to go to. Next thing you know, she's like, when you see her, you know, you can tell she is like extremely terrified because she got, you know, I'm just like, dang, you know, they ain't got no Bluetooth or nothing like that, you know, down there or wherever she at. But, you know, this is a movie. You know how it is when we watch movies. I, I mean, I'll be thinking logical. Like, man, look, I'm scared. I mean, I ain't going to be using no candle because candles can easily enough blow out. I'm going to either put my mom on FaceTime or something. I ain't about to hold the phone and be holding the candle. You end up lighting yourself up or the candle. You don't drop the candle because you don't got scared. But, you know, she went down there. You keep seeing every step she went to. She was getting terrified. She's like, Mom, I'm terrified. And you just see tears just coming down her face. And then the next thing you know, she was like, okay. You know, she started counting like one. You know, two, three, and then when she got ten, she's like, "See, you're right there." And next, you know, she have, a, and you can hear her and her voice when she's terrified. She's like, "Okay, mom, you know, she's like five, you know, uh, six. And then when she got ten, she was like, "Oh," and then you can see her, and she just closed her eyes, and you know, and she, you can just tell she got fear written all over her face. And I'm just sitting up here, you know, with my blanket, just looking like, "No, oh, shit, no, go back up the stairs." You and Stephen, we stayed it outside until y'all get home. That means you need to hurry it up, speed up, whatever you got to get done at work, and come home. I ain't got time for that. You see how the lights done got bright, and that's how I'm about to be outside sitting on the porch. I ain't about to play with y'all with these daggone houses, you know, because it, it was like a manor. Next thing you know, she was just like 10, 11, 12. She was like, hold up, wait a minute. She was just scared a few minutes ago. You know, she was just scared. I'm like, no, y'all got to get home. I'm in mommy mode. I'm like, y'all got to get home. They went flying home. They said, you know, they couldn't find, uh, what, what's her name, Ellie. You know, so, you know, you got to get into the movie. But basically, what made so much sense is like when I'm watching this movie and I'm hearing like different things that I know I truly resonate with, like the Rose situation. And it was like seven and it said seven princes. You know, okay, I'm just looking like, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. And I have a thing about counting numbers. And then these people, you see somebody doing this, and I'm like, hold up. Then you see all these different numbers all around the house. Like, the guy was a mathematic. He was a, a, a I think he was a, um, he was a professor or something like that at college, you know, one of them, you know, private schools or whatever. And you seeing him do this and then, you know, all these different numbers. I said, look, that look Greek. That's a hieroglyph or something. Next, you know, they start talking about hieroglyphs, but I don't want to get deep into the movie. But when I was thinking about it, I was like, this girl done went to a void somewhere. They started getting on voids. But then it was just like when I was seeing it. I don't know if y'all like me. When I start seeing it, it's like my my ADD and my OCD and my PTSD start kicking in when I start seeing stuff like this. And I'm just up here screaming at the TV like, oh, hell no. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm just starting to think. And when I tell you, I just zooted out of it. And it was like, we all make choices and not realize that we're in voids. You know, we're in our own void right now. We can either allow ourselves to um go through a void of emptiness or we can make our lives of, of positivity of gratitude gratefulness appreciation all these things and i feel like both of them can be voids but it's just like this one is like dread 
and this one is like you know has happiness prosper you know all, all anything that represents that that you know that's that, that vibration of upliftment of growth of healing and then it's just it made me think and the way and if you watch the movie you'll start understanding what I'm talking about and it's just like I really don't want to get depth into it because you'd be like Rosalind I don't want to see it now you done told me the movie I don't want to see it now but then it'll be like you know because I know people they know like Rosalind what's the good movie to watch I'm like man I know I watched The Exorcism of God with old boy Jeffrey from Dagon uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air I was like man that was up in the 80's I mean I, you know early 90's with Will Smith and he still looked the same you know and except he's a pastor <laughs> He's a preacher, what do you call it? A priest, father, you know, a padre, you know, but it was just, I'm like, dang, he got that black that don't crack or something like that because uh, Jeffrey still looked the same. You know, he just got gray hair, that was it, but still looked good. But, you know, anybody like Rosalind, what's the good movies to come out? And I always, you know, especially if we've been on chat, and I know I ain't had chat in a while, but, um, uh, you know, I'll be telling them, like, look, this is the movie you got to see. Because it's like when you watch uh, Exorcism of God. I think it was like the last Exorcism of God. And when I say that mess hit deep, I was like, no, this is not the way this is going to go. Because you think it's like any, any you know, possession of movies is just like what we work in, especially with me. You know, I've always been drawn to, like, Exorcist movies or, you know, possession movies. or like, you know, of Hannah Grace, of Marley Hartley, of, you know, The Exorcist, The Exorcist. You know, I watched that at nine years old. And it's, you know, the whole daggone neighborhood lights went out. My mom threw that VHS tape out the door so quick. It's like, y'all done bought the devil in this damn house. Take it out. You know, but whatever. But... It just made me think about, that's why a lot of people, I, it would make a lot of sense to me. There's a lot of people that just come up missing, you know, and I feel, really feel like there's an avoid. Just like, you know, when a lot of the different times, like during our timelines, how we can manipulate things, the mind is very strong. You know, we wouldn't be able to do things if it wasn't, you know, our education or our engineering or what we were up, you know, what what our vibration are, you know, and different things. Because it was like even when the man was talking about, you know, head accidents and I was just like, why is this a lot of things that I was talking about in videos? I always talk about he was because he was just talking about, you know, there was just a chunk of it. But that's in the beginning where he said he got into a really bad head accident. And all of a sudden he started doing things backwards. And he said, I'm starting to get used to this because I'm able to, I used to have issues with numbers. Now it's just like I'm so fascinated by him. And I saw this and this and that. And it will be different things where, you know, she was like, hey, I need you to, what, what does this mean? You know, and I was looking at this is like hieroglyphs i don't know it looks like greek but it was like uh 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 what is it um hebrew that's what it was i think they said it was hebrew or something like that and i was like no but it was different things that i was guessing that you you know it would you know there'll be different movies that you can watch that um you can pretty much figure out what's going on but this is like something that's like it's not just horror movie but this is like the, the, you know the 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 thing about quantum physics and then it's like a psychological thriller and it's like one of the psychological thrillers that will really make you think because it's like you trying to hurry up and figure out what the heck going on in this movie and when I say that movie was good because I was trying to watch the movie The Twin with my girl from The Lights Out and, and The Grudge movie when she was a bad girl and junk like that and I was like I couldn't get into this because the thing kept flicking or whatever but I wanted to watch uh, Cellar, and then it was like Cellar, I was just so drawn into it, and if I had to go to the bathroom, it was like one of the ones you got to pause, and like, no, wait a minute, I don't want to miss nothing, and it was just like really good, but then it was like, after I watched that, I started thinking about, you know, what's the depths of void, you know, I know it, you know, I know what it means and stuff like that, but I really want to get down into it, and that's what I do, y'all know, I, I read up on different things, and when I feel like, you know, a lot of people can you know, uh, uh, you know, understand these different things or how you can feel like it. Because I know, you know, we all go through ascension, kundalini, spiritual awakening. But this is like a state of void, spiritual awakening. And I was like, hold the front door. Wait a minute. Shut your mouth and keep talking. Like, oh, my, like, wait a minute. A void of, of you going through a stage of um, spiritual awakening. I never heard of that. So it was like I brought up the... The thing where it was telling you, you know, if you feel like you need to go through a therapist or different ways to be able to do this. But I'm going to take um, 
I'm going to talk about a little bit of different things on here, but I'm going to leave the link in case you want to, you know, go into depth about it. Because, you know, this movie, this video is already about 15 minutes long. I ain't trying to go all the way out like that. But it's like when you're going through, uh, uh, going through a, a void of spiritual awakening, um, it's, it's about empty, emptiness, you know, um, experiencing loss, abandonment issues, you know, feeling like something's off or missing. You know, you can be going through a mood disorder, personality disorder, or um, unhealthy coping mechanisms. You know, we a lot of us do that, you know, through that. But it's like you you go through something like um, a death in the family, miscarriage, you know, a, a divorce, um, a change in um, financial. You know, a lot of people are going through that. You know, you're going through different things. A lot of us is bringing us towards our purpose anyway. Um, or even you had children and it's just like, you know, um, with us being empaths, I feel like postpartum can get a lot, you know, not a lot of people go through postpartum, but I feel like some empaths, depending on what your experience has been in life, I really feel like that can trigger off a heavy vibration in that. So, um, it's different things that they say that it can be pro prolonged where you feel like it's hopelessness. You don't feel um, the things that you enjoy doing is no longer an in, uh, interest to you. You feel dis disassociated even around people around you um, where you feel like they're going to leave you. They're, you know, you're going through abandonment issues where you don't allow people to get close to you. Um, no matter in, in all the different things, you, you're just not, you, you're lacking the mobility or the proactiveness to be able to be active. You know, so these are the different things that tell you, um, you know, uh, I know that's probably like night and day. <laughs> well, well, it did start it off in the video, but it, it's just like, it, I feel like it all goes into one. And, you know, you've been with me for a while. You know me and my randomness. I'll do that. But it's just like mood disorders. It tells you about that. You know, um, if you go through different things in life where you're, you know, you, you, you get irrational at different times. You know, you can't deal with things like regular people deal with things. You know, well, all of us deal with it differently. Put it that way. But a lot of times people can deal with something that can be aggravating and you just want to be left alone or you don't want to talk about it. Or you could be that person that just ramble on or whatever. But it's like um, sometimes you can get uh, un unhealthy coping mechanism over a long period of time and extends that way. And it can either um, be through drugs, alcohol, sex, or even throwing themselves into work, new relationships, um, instead of actually working through, th through them. You know, I know I've been that way. Uh, with different, yeah, basically these things, you know, because there'll be a lot of times I'll do go do something and I'd rather do my videos and there'll be different times where I'm like nah because you know I'm being a little bit too ugh, in these video let me go ahead and redo this again or you know oh I don't want to feel this way I feel negative so I want to do something positive but it was just like universe is telling me you know you need to allow yourself to feel that that's why I was telling y'all in that other video you have to allow yourself to feel the emotions you have do not numb them down don't use coping mechanisms to deal with your heartache pain depression whatever you got you have to allow yourself to feel them and we have a bad habit to numbing them to where like it says jumping into a new relationship and I tell people that's a, a bad thing especially if you jumped out of a you just got out of a narcissistic one or a toxic one because pretty much then you jump in another one you're going to be dealing with the same thing except it's a different person it's going to be the same situation it's going to be very mm -hmm. toxic and it's um telling you not to do that mm -hmm. hold on y'all real quick sorry about that y'all but yeah Going through different things to where um, we we have unhealthy coping mechanisms to not dealing with, you know, these situations. And a lot of times you feel like something's way off or you're becoming detached away from your life, detached away uh, from your, even from yourself. And these things, um, they, they tell you um, the best thing to do if you can, you know, if you can afford it in your budget is to make sure you get a therapist. But if not, they give off different things to be able to allow yourself. Don't do binge watching on TV. And I'm like, Ew. you know, I do that at times, but it's just like allowing yourself to be active. Even when you don't feel like doing it is the best thing because you'll start feeling better, you know, um, 
when uh when you're allowing yourself to you know find different things to be proactive you know go walking meditate you know uh you know allow yourself to practice on mindfulness uh different things that will uh take place for you to um to understand what what you need to go through and they're telling you you know don't allow yourself to numb it down but don't allow yourself to go through different sequences of what you did what what you said what somebody else has said you know what the situation was dive deeper in in the pit of you know loneliness numbness or depression or whatever but it tells different things you know if you're feeling hopelessness uh worthlessness despair disconnection like i was saying numbness um longing like you're you're longing for um uh, something that feels like it's missing out of your life. Sometimes people can in, in, e easily identify with what's missing, and some people are not. You know, you don't. You know, some people just don't. But it's like a lot of times that can trigger off or being diagnosed. And I ain't no doctor, but it just says like borderline personality disorder, post traumatic stress. You know, PTSD, um, complex trauma. You know, um, this is like a trauma that is like formal, not formal diagnosed, but is increasingly being recognized as an experience unique with uh, the symptoms of PTSD, which I didn't know. Um, combination with P, uh, B, uh, B, what is it? B, P, D, you know, both personal, bipolar, both personality disorder. Um, and it's like, uh, it's like um, a, uh, a maladaptive Dang, ain't worth, maladaptive methods of coping, like struggling with inter, uh, interpersonal relationships, or having the inability to regulate your emotions, um, complicated grief, you know, persistence and, and, and bereavement. You know, you're going through a lot of stuff like that, where it's, e it's not easy for you to heal from whatever dr traumatic situation you've been in, and uh, major uh, depressive disorder. That too, you know, is prolonged periods of sadness, loneliness, you know, um, uh, feelings of despair, hopelessness, you know, and it worsens, you know, is, is the factor where it can end up happening, you know, and those different things and anxiety disorder. But it actually shows like different stuff that you may be able to, uh, you may be able to really resonate with, but it's just like, um, um, it's like 10 ways to showing you how to fill a void because it's like when they were talking about the void I, I really started thinking about the different things that that family was going through and that and it made a lot of sense like wow you know it really got deep into that but you know I just didn't want to you know, go back and tell y'all anything like that you know um I, let me not you know be thinking about you know wanting to tell y'all the whole movie because y'all may want to see it but that movie is really good it's called The Cellar but um they got 10 ways on how to uh deal with that you know filling the void you're not you're not going down that way you know it's like meditation mindfulness you know like i said um spending more time connecting with others you know especially this on that vibration of positivity because a lot of times it depends on who we who we deal with because you're dealing with somebody else that got multiple personality disorders and always going through that eeyore vibe man y'all both probably just send each other off a cliff and that's not good but um be intentional about uh, with your free time, you know, um, like I said, it's just like you doing something that you don't feel like doing what used to make you happy. Do you like drawing? Do you like painting? Um, just taking a nature walk if weather permits it. Um, working out, you know, allowing yourself to be active instead of sitting somewhere, you know, doing something unless it's just like if you're going to go you know, to a therapist or something like that. But it's that set, set work on your goals. You know what you want in your life. You know what you're trying to heal from. You know what you need to do to get towards that point. If not, you're writing down. It's just like when you're writing, you're being, you know, you're holding yourself attentive of being placing your intentions on what you want in your life you know if you want to do a website you're allowing yourself to write down the things like hey i want this website to consist of this or i want to invent this and you you know and you're asking the universe you know hey i'm open to receiving that because when it's just like you know like i said before in my other videos when you know when, when they don't play something in there and then you putting it on paper it's a goal when you place the goals in there it's like you're trying to Put, bring, bring your dreams to manifest in a few, you know, a fruition.
and from us going through the day for day things that we're going through different changes different healing different growth different you know perspectives that's the manifesting because we're allowing ourselves to go through this to be able to create this in our lives and that's what's getting us towards there so i hope this was able to you know i didn't want to be you know all over the place but if y'all know me you be like girl you don't win you know straight got me lost but hopefully you'll be able to understand but the movie had made a lot of sense when it was talking about uh, voids in our life you know different things that we we all deal with you know because it was just like when i seen it i went into depth like oh wow this is the reason why these certain things are going on and you know in their issues of their life <coughs> with their family but then it made me think about different things that go off in the world where you're hearing about these families that you know went on this boat and all of a sudden this you know they didn't come they came up missing or you know these people were at this house and all of a sudden their life had to end in a certain way. These are, it's just like voids and stuff that you don't realize people don't stepped into into a parallel universe. And that's why I was thinking that like that. Wow, that's deep. And it makes a lot of sense, you know, because I, like I tell people, truth is stranger than fiction. A lot of times we try to wonder how, you know, you couldn't see, you know, these different things. And all of a sudden, these, say these people in your life, you know, and did all these different things, or all of a sudden the, the whole family done left, or a ship full of people, all of a sudden they done left, you know, done came up somewhere, and they, they end up not being found, you know, even the ships in Malaysia, that, you know, they had, I think they had two of them that was gone, you know, a couple of months apart or whatever, next, you know, they found one and they couldn't find the other, and I really think it, it's in a void somewhere, you know, they still living, they still growing, they could be like that one like that show they got, I don't know, I think it's like called Manifest or something like that. You know, where everybody aged and when they were gone, they thought they were only gone for like about an hour. Shoot, you've been gone for like 10, 15 years. And I still ain't watched that show. I got to watch that too. But um, I hope you are able to resonate with that. Like I said, I'm going to leave the link to this in case you want to uh, have a good read on it, which it is. You know, if you're going through something like this where you really feel like you can't shake depression or you you going through that void, you know that void of despair, or you going through you know something that you really are trying to find your way out of, but you keep finding yourself going right back to square one, and and, and it's not getting better. So you know, hopefully this will be able to help you. Like I said, I'll leave the link in there, you know, and especially if you would love to watch the movie Seller, that's also really good. So you probably find it on one of the websites or go to the movies, whatever. But anyways, you know, I hope you are able to resonate with the content of this video. As always, you know, I tell y'all, leave my contact information in the description box below. And um, it's all about spiritual networking. Just be able to give you a deeper understanding about your path of purpose or whatever you may be going through right now that led you to your purpose and you're trying to really have a deeper understanding about it. And I try my best to help out where I can and you know whatever we speak on is confidential. And um, I also leave my link to my uh, my uh, podcast as well to our Spotify. And um, if you ever feel gracious enough to drop a donation, I'll also leave my cash app as well. Um, I hope you have a blessed, safe weekend. Please uh, be responsible and safe for everything you do. Like I said in my other videos, thank you for leaving the um, birthday wishes. It's greatly appreciated. You know, it's blessed to see for uh, 45 years. It, you know, it was just like that. It's really done been a life to me, but it's like grateful to see 45. But um, thank you. And whatever you try to, you know, manifest into your life, I'm sending so many uplifting vibes to be able to help you get there. And, um, what else did I need to say? Uh, whatever you're trying to get into your life, I'm going to send those vibes that really, you know, is going to blow the door off of that. You know, a lot of us are going through different things where it may feel like things ain't going your way, but it's, you just don't know how close you are. So stay consistent and please, you know, be persistent and stay consistent with yourself. Because, you know, the devil might try to tell you to give up today and the blessing may come through tomorrow. So keep on moving. You never know what God has in store for you. So I hope you have a, a blessed weekend. Be safe for everything you do. Even through social distancing, make sure you give out love, light, positivity, words, wide frequencies. You never know. All those things will really take you a long way. And just for um, take somebody a long way and just for you participating in that can take them even further. Or take you even further. Much love. Peace.